All right, so we now know that it is a common practice to return models rather than the entities directly from the API call. And these models are the DTO objects, which are the data transfer objects. So let's create another folder and I'll call it DTOs. So let's start creating the classes. I'll right click and add the first one. And this one can be for comedian. So it's going to be comedian DTO. And the comedian, let's have a look at the class itself or the entity, only has properties that directly belong to the comedian, like first name, last name, and contact phone. So technically, we wouldn't really need this because it matches the comedian class. But we want to also apply some annotation to, to these properties. So for example, we could make the comedian ID to be required. And of course, we need to bring in the namespace for the annotations, which is in component model dot data annotations. And we can do required for the first name as well. And also for the last name, for example. And the contact phone can be optional. So even though we wouldn't necessarily need this and we could apply definitely the annotations even in the entities, since I'm going to be returning DTOs for at least some of the objects, I want to do it for all of them rather than mixing entities with the DTO objects. So this is our comedian, very simple. So next let's create DTO class for the gig. So it's going to be gig DTO. And this one can have a few properties. The first one is going to be the gig ID. In fact, let's have a look at what's in the gig class. And I'm going to copy them all and modify it. So we want the gig ID definitely. And that one's going to be required. So again, let's bring the namespace. And we can get the headline as required. And we can also specify, for example, a string length. Again, it's not necessary, but this is a tutorial, so this will show us few annotations. And let's make the minimal string length to be 20. Now we have the gig length in minutes. So this one, rather than specifying the length, let's specify the range. So each gig has to be at least, for example, 15 minutes and no more than two hours, so 120 minutes. Now we also have the relationship properties for the event and comedian. But of course, we don't want it to be an event and comedian anymore. We want to return DTO objects. So we want to work with event DTO, which we don't have yet, but we'll create it next. And then we'll have the comedian DTO that we just created. So this is our gig DTO. Next, let's go to Social Explorer and add another class. And this one will be the venue DTO. And let's have a look at the venue model. And it has only properties directly related to the venue, like the state, street, seating, and serves alcohol and so forth. So I'm going to copy them all and paste them here because they will be the same for our venue. And let's make the venue ID required. So let's bring in the namespace. And we can make the venue name required as well. The rest can be maybe optional. And finally, let's create the events DTO. So it's going to be a last DTO. Let's have a look at the event model. And I'm copy all of this and place it in the DTO here. So what we need is the required for the ID. And of course, we need the namespace. And we can make the event name required as well. And let's say we want this to be string length of no less than 20 characters. We can leave event date optional because not every date is set yet. And then we have a collection of gigs 
that belong to the DTO. But of course, we don't want the collection of gig model, we want the gig DTOs instead. And the same for the venue. We need the venue for the event, but we want the venue DTO, not the venue model. So all the DTO classes are ready and now we can start using them. So let's go back to our controller and update the get event action.